Guys, welcome back to Drawing Conversation. I'm your dedicated nerd, host, and artist, Danny Fisher, and I am so excited to bring you one of my favorite all-time superheroes. But you've got to stick around to the end to find out who that is. So let's get started. Guys, I am so very excited to talk about one of my favorite superheroes, but before I can jump into that, I have got to touch on a few power sets, things that are extremely important before I can get in to one of my favorite superheroes of all time. Now, I want to start off with the story of King Solomon. That's right. King of Israel, the story goes that God came to Solomon, told him he could have one wish. And Solomon, instead of asking for extremely long life or to see his enemies crushed or immeasurable wealth, he asked for one thing. He asked for wisdom to rule his people justly. And God, being so pleased with that answer, not only granted Solomon with more wisdom than anyone who had ever lived or anyone that would ever live, but also crushed his enemies, gave him immeasurable wealth, an extremely long life and I've always been fascinated and drawn with the idea of Solomon because of his immense wisdom. I need to point out that Solomon is a great example of knowledge versus wisdom. Now Solomon may not have the knowledge of the inner workings of a nuclear bomb. It doesn't mean he can't learn it, he just doesn't understand it. But what he does possess is he possesses the wisdom on when to use a nuclear bomb. I want to now talk about a character that I've always loved growing up, and that is the character of Hercules. I want to talk about the 12 trials. I'm not going to split hairs. Some people believe there's 10. I'm going to name off the 12 trials of Hercules. Uh, I'm going to try to get through it quick. This is really kind of tough, but I'm going to give it a shot. Slay the Minion Lion, slay that nine-headed Hydra, capture the Syrian Hind, capture the Oranthium Bull, clean the Ogoan Stables in one day, slay the Stymenthian Birds, capture the Cretan Bull, steal the Mare of Diomedes, obtain the Girdle of Hiplodia, obtain the Cattle of the Monster Grayan, steal the apples of Hesperides and capture and bring back Cerberus, the Hound of Hell. Wow, it really puts in perspective. When someone says, I just completed a Herculean task. For me, I loved the character of Hercules. So much fun to draw. I need to now go on to the story of Atlas. Now I did a little research and Atlas, I, and, and, and I had no idea, I always believed that Atlas held the weight of the world on his shoulders. That's not the case. He held the heavens. And for the ancient Greeks, the first star that appeared at night was Venus. And Venus represented the heavens. And Atlas, being a titan who rebelled and tried to steal Olympus, was cursed and punished to hold and separate Gaia, Earth, from the heavens for eternity. Now that brings us to Zeus. That's right, god of all gods, ruler of Mount Olympus, wielder of lightning. I didn't know this. I thought that he had to battle out ownership uh, or rule with his brothers, um, Hades, and Poseidon, but that's not the case. The case is of the three brothers, they all drew lots, and Zeus just happened to draw the short straw, so to speak, and became the ruler of Olympus, the ruler of gods. And he always represented to the Greeks a force of nature, the god of nature, and if everything was going well and you were doing right by the gods, you would have beautiful temperate weather, wonderful uh, crops, but if he was displeased, here's the opposite side, obviously you're going to suffer his wrath. 
and you'd have lightning and storms and violent earthquakes. And for me, I, I honestly didn't know all this backstory, or excuse me, as much backstory that there was with Zeus. And hey, please go out, look it up. It is a ton of backstory, great stuff. Um, Zeus, not always the most um, moral <laughs> individual to say the least, but still fun reads. I don't know why, hey, go ask the Greeks. I need to move on to another character that I loved reading about and learning more on, and that is Achilles. That's right, the greatest warrior who ever lived. The story goes that God instructed his mother to submerge him in the river Styx. And the only thing she could hold on to was his ankle. And she submerges him in this water, uh, in the river Styx. And he's completely invulnerable to any type of physical damage and becomes the world's, one of the world's greatest warriors and, and leader of men into battle. And I love the idea of just of, of, of living in that time and being completely invulnerable, to have that type of courage um, to just charge into the battlefield knowing you were invincible. And, and still to this day, I don't know if he knew of that his mother had done that or if he was just that good of a warrior. Don't want to dwell on that too much. I want to talk about the god Mercury. And I loved the look of Mercury. He's always been iconic. You can tell Mercury whenever you approach any type of Greek statue of Mercury, whether where they're portraying all the gods in their pantheon, you can always pick up Mercury. He is so iconic. Love the god Mercury. And I didn't know this. I had to do a little more research on, on Mercury as well, but he is not only the god of shopkeepers, of merchants, of travelers, of transportation of goods. He is also the god of trickster uh, and thieves and just, just really any type of good fortune. But obviously, messenger of the gods. Now, I don't want to get into who's faster, Mercury or the Flash, because that's an entirely different ball of wax. The Flash taps into the speed force, and that's something completely different. That could be an episode totally unto itself, and I hope to get to it because I love me some Flash. But I loved the idea of Mercury. Um, and he's even, if you do a little more research, he's even cemented in the fact that he cannot travel past the speed of light, which I really love because I don't want to nerd rage too hard, but if you travel faster than photons, then photons have to bounce off an object to bounce back into your retina to give you an image of what's going on, of what's around you. And if you travel faster, wouldn't you just end up running into a wall or maybe like a sparrow at the near speed of light and it would just go right through? I don't, hey, okay, getting off rails just a little bit there. I'm sorry, I just had to nerd rage a bit. Okay, I'm back. Still love Mercury, such an amazing iconic figure. Now, to bring it in perspective, if you could have any one of these six powers, you would be such an amazing hero or villain. But imagine having all six, that type of power, how easily that type of power could go to your head. And if you've kept up so far and you are as much of a nerd as I am, I am talking about Shazam. That's right. One of my favorite heroes, Billy Batson. If you don't know it already, Shazam is an acronym for Solomon's Wisdom, Hercules' Strength, Atlas's Endurance, Zeus's Power, Achilles' Courage and Mercury speed. And whenever he speaks the name Shazam, Billy Batson is transformed into the embodiment, the world's most powerful mortal. Sometimes people often refer to him as a magical Superman, but he's a character unto himself. Billy Batson, what I loved about Shazam is not only the entire backstory of the gods and kings that he embodies but what i love the most is he was born into this power 
He didn't buy this power. It wasn't something that was given to him or he cheated his way in and was able to get it or, or, or given these powers through a freak accident um, of an explosion or a spider bite. He was found by the wizard Shazam who had been battling evil for eternity and was growing weary and needed to find someone good enough that he could give these powers to. And whenever he speaks the name Shazam, he is transformed into the world's most powerful mortal. And that's why I love Shazam. He will always be one of my favorite heroes. And guys, thank you for sticking through. This was so much fun. So guys, there you have it. The complete power sets of Shazam, one of my favorite superheroes of all time. As always, hit that notification bell, subscribe, and leave a comment, and I hope to catch you again real soon.